Being the next Ronaldo is quite simply a curse, especially if you go around addressing the claims, or even worse, if you're literally from the same country as him, in the same academy, following the exact same career path, breaking the same records at the same clubs with the same coaches, even becoming close friends with him and living together for years. Of course, after all of that, the comparisons, the pressure, it's gonna be unbeatable. It's a man standing in the shoulders of a giant. That's exactly what happened to Nani. I remember literally reading about him saying he believed he could be better than Ronaldo, that his goal was to become the world's best player, but by the time he entered his prime, it was a different story. Now they wrote of a man whose name had been forgotten. At the eyes of the Man United fans and coach Sir Alex Ferguson, Nani was no longer Nani. He was simply not Ronaldo. With a childhood story like his, it only becomes sadder that he never was given a proper shot at showing the world who he was worth, but regardless, this was the life of Luis Nani. Enjoy. Nani began telling his story by saying, well, it all started because we were starving. He was sharing a single room with his mom and eight siblings, the whole house was infested with rats and geckos, they barely had any food, he barely had any clothes. And if he left the house, he was only met with more misery. I once heard him say, normally people hear an ambulance and check to see what's happening. In a tough neighborhood, that doesn't happen. When I heard an ambulance, I ran away. I was afraid of what I could see. If eight siblings weren't enough, Nani actually had 16 in total. His father had eight more children living in Cape Verde. But one day, he went to check on them and he never came back. From there on out, his big brother took his place, keeping Nani safe, but still, he never managed to fully get him under control. From stealing bikes to riding around in cars stolen by his friends, it was hard to steer clear from trouble in a place like that. One day, his brother told him he knew where they could get free food. He said that on the other side of town, people just gave you food if you asked. Nani was shocked, and so he followed them. Upon finding a pizza hut, they begged the cashier for a slice. She said she couldn't but then she came outside with a full pizza. They were ecstatic, Nani even said, I can still taste that pizza to this day, only those who have felt true hunger will understand. But that wasn't even the best thing that happened that day. The woman heard that they played football and called her friend asking for a favor. Sooner than later, she had gotten Nani's brother a trial at Sporting CP. But then, it took him a month to show up there. Nani was pissed. How could he waste an opportunity like this? But what I think Nani didn't realize was that his brother didn't miss it by choice, he was just too busy taking care of Nani himself to follow his own dreams. Regardless, soon Nani had his own chance. His best friend Sabine walked past him and told him, hey, we're going for trials at this club, wanna come? Nani rushed home trying to find clothes, but there was nothing suitable. So in an act of desperation, he put on a t-shirt, some jeans over a pair of shorts and a pair of leather shoes like the ones you'd wear to a wedding and went looking for his friends. They had already taken the train, but Nani couldn't afford the tickets, so instead he ran three miles all the way to the stadium, even though it was raining outside. And when he arrived, everyone was mocking him. What is this guy wearing? But as soon as they began playing, they were all in awe of Nani's skills. And so the coach asked him, how did you get here? Nani replied, I ran. The moment he heard this, he handed him a makeshift contract, asked him to sign and told him, come back tomorrow, I'll give you a proper kit. It had only been 10 minutes since he had arrived. Nani was at Real Masama for 7 years. It was then that his mom left for the Netherlands, leaving them behind once again. For years, Nani woke up every morning at 7 a.m. to run sprints, always on an empty stomach. When he wasn't at Masama, he was playing street football tournaments. Once, he played at Bairro Seis de Mai when there were police everywhere. They just happened to begin to raid the houses as the match started. The entire team was scared. By halftime, they were losing 9-2. to But then their coach said, nothing outside the pitch matters, let go of any worries and focus on the ball. And the showboating started. Out of nowhere, even the home fans were supporting them. By the end, the result was 16 to 2. As Nani walked off the pitch, a girl handed him a paper. It was like, what am I supposed to do with this? And the coach replied, sign it. One day that signature is gonna be worth a million. But unfortunately, he was wrong. He had signed with his real name, Luis. 
Soon the big clubs came knocking on his door but things got complicated. Benfica told him they would send a scout to watch him but he never showed up so Nani joined Sporting instead but then Benfica came back asking him to join as well and suddenly he was playing at both at the same time never saying a word about it to anyone. It was then that his friend Sabine, who was also at Sporting, introduced him to the older players. One of them heard Nani could do a backflip and kept pestering him to do one. Eventually, though very embarrassed, Nani fulfilled his wish and they became friends, joking around on the bus, with the older kid always helping him whenever he needed. That kid was Cristiano Ronaldo. One day, Nani was dismissed by the club. Ronaldo was waiting for him in the corridor when he got the news and he just began yelling at everyone that they were making a huge mistake, that Nani was at minimum a top 5 player in the whole academy and though they didn't listen at first, soon they reverted their decision and called Nani up, but this time he had to pick between Benfica and Sporting as the sessions overlapped and since his friends were all at Sporting, he risked it all and went with the club who had rejected him. Thankfully, it paid off. However, a year later everything was different. Ronaldo had now joined Man United for 15 million euros, the most expensive teenager in Premier League history. There was no one left to fill his shoes and so Nani was handed his first contract and joined the first team a year later. Before he had even played his first match, he was already being tasked with replacing the irreplaceable. Still, with his first bit of money, Nani bought a flight to Cape Verde and went looking for his dad. He thought he would find a man who had abandoned him, but instead, he found a man longing for his family. Turns out, he had been stuck in Cape Verde for years after he ran into problems with his visa. Thankfully, Nani had found him again. In his two seasons with Sporting, his numbers weren't mind-blowing. He struggled physically, now playing with the big boys. He was even mocked for not being able to lift 20 kilos at the gym. They asked him, what have they been feeding you? Little did they know, the answer was, well, nothing. But then, with proper training and nutrition, he grew so fast that soon he was lifting more than most of the squad and playing like never before. Right in that first year, Sporting finished second in the league, which was better than any placement they had achieved in the Ronaldo and Quaresma era. In the second season, it only got better. Nani improved his numbers and not only kept Sporting in second place in the league, but he also took them to their first major trophy in five years, winning the Portuguese Cup. It was also around this time that he fell out with his agent and got a new one, none other than Jorge Mendes. I wonder if anyone had a say in that decision. Regardless, it was clear that top clubs were under the impression that any young talented winger that came out of Sporting would be a goldmine. Mendes came to Nani with five options, Chelsea, Juventus, Bayern, Real Madrid and Manchester United. Then he pointed at Man United and told him, here everyone will help you. You have Queiroz as second coach, Ronaldo is there as well and Sir Alex sees you as the next great thing. So Nani got on the first flight to Manchester, 25.5 million euros were paid to Sporting, 10 more than what had been paid for Ronaldo himself just two years before. When Nani arrived, he didn't even need to look for a hotel. Ronaldo told him, forget about that, you're moving in with me. And so it was. Nani had everything to be a huge success and upon scoring his first goal through a Ronaldo-esque thunderbolt from 35 yards out, followed by his iconic backflip celebration, the fans were simply in love. Nevertheless, he did struggle a bit to find his place, having to share the available game time with Ronaldo, Rooney, Tevez and Saha, but he still seemed to show up whenever he was needed the most, scoring against Liverpool, assisting versus Roma twice, putting on a show against Arsenal, scoring and assisting too while also frustrating their entire squad by going around the pitch juggling the ball between his knee and his head, getting fouled aggressively and then being called disrespectful by Wenger. But above all, the most impressive thing of all came in the Champions League final. After Ronaldo missing the penalty shootout, it was 21-year-old Nani who was called up to take the penalty that could have sent Man United home. But instead, he scored. And as both Terry and Anelka missed, Nani was crowned an European champion and a Man United hero, bailing out the great Cristiano Ronaldo. But after all, the great Cristiano, to him, was just his housemate, the kid he met back in Lisbon. By now, the newspapers were already going pretty hard, forcing a rivalry between the two, but according to Nani, they only wanted the best for each other. All that mattered was winning. He says that the number one thing Ronaldo taught him was to be allergic to defeat. 
By 2009, after a harder season, frequently being dropped in favor of Berbatov and watching from the stands as Man United fell before Barcelona in the UCL final, he finally moved out as Ronaldo left for Madrid. More than ever now, he was expected to replace him, and even he fell for this narrative. I couldn't find any online sources for this, but I remember reading a Portuguese newspaper back in the day, they asked Nani about this, and he said, I believe I can do anything that Ronaldo has done. My goal is to also be the best in the world one day. So clearly, he also felt this pressure to live up to his friend's achievements and even Ronaldo himself would go on to say, he's, without a doubt, one of the best players in the world. But regardless, as beautiful as Nani was to watch, his numbers were underwhelming and though he did show up at the biggest of stages, two goals and an assist versus Bayern in the quarterfinals of the Champions League were enough to prove that his consistency was still far from ideal. Nani had not been able to carve out a path for himself, he was still only seen by the fans as unfortunately not Ronaldo. Nowadays, seeing how the fans treat Martial, who is loved despite being ever so frustrating to watch, establishes the perfect parallel. Why didn't Nani get that same love? Well, I can tell you, but it was also in 2010 that he was famously accused of ruining Ronaldo's greatest ever goal. The thing is, he didn't. Not only was he not offside, he only touched the ball inside the goal. It was the referee who should have been the target of so much anger. Regardless, it clearly didn't affect him much and I can tell you that his 2010-2011 season was one of the best by any United player in history. That year, Nani scored 10 and assisted 20, 19 of which in the league, meaning that across Europe only Messi had registered more assists and that in the history of the Premier League only Henri, De Bruyne and Fabregas had managed to outdo him. It was also that season that he reached 100 Premier League matches and he was out to Ronaldo across the board. It was a season in which, despite dealing with two different injuries, he went on a run of 28 Premier League games with 28 goal contributions. It was easily one of the best in the league and he was still 24. Only two years older than Ronaldo was when he had his first world-class season, but yet his treatment was different. Though he did win Man United's Player of the Year award, he was snubbed of even a nomination to the PFA Player of the Year award in favor of players like Scott Parker and Charlie Adam, while being nominated for a Young Player of the Year only to lose out to Jack Wilshere, who had much inferior numbers to those of Nani, and to make it all worse, then out of nowhere he was dropped to the bench in the Champions League final. At least, he did get a place in the team of the year and later a nomination to the Ballon d'Or, but that wasn't enough to satisfy him after such unfairness. The next season he was contributing to goals at a rate like never before, 25 in total at around 1 every 114 minutes, but United underperformed and Sir Alex was still treating him like an immature child. As Bebe would tell the press, Ferguson was always shouting at Nani, he saw faults in everything he did probably because he thought he would be as good as Ronaldo. And so the next season, Nani finally broke, playing the full 90 just six times, falling victim to an hamstring injury in what was Sir Alex's final season. With his departure, Nani looked for a way out, but Man United stopped him. New coach David Moyes told him he would be the star of the team, but then players like Tom Cleverley and Danny Welbeck had more minutes than him. Then a move to Juve was set up and in the final minutes of the transfer market, they blocked the move and once again forced him to stay. But then Nani had enough of Van Gaal and by the end of the season he was leaving through the back door as Van Gaal damn near begged them to stay. What many had failed to see is that they were letting go of the greatest assist provider in the history of the club. Cantona, Beckham, Giggs, no one managed a higher assist providing frequency than Nani, and across the history of the Premier League, only Fabregas had done better. It is what it is. Regardless, he moved to Sporting, won another Portuguese Cup and then went on to Fenerbahce, giving it all in hopes of a call-up to the Euro 2016. At the tournament, things didn't go well. Portugal repeatedly failed to win a match under the 90-minute mark, but Nani was always there, putting up numbers in draws against Iceland, Poland and Hungary, as well as against Wales in the semi-final. When it was time to face France in the final, it was a match that could define his career, but of course, as Ronaldo went down to the ground injured, he handed the captain armband to who else but Nani. 
Ironic as it was, in the greatest match of his career, he would literally have to play the role of the man whose shadow he had been running from all his life. Regardless of how he played that night, in the end Portugal were champions of Europe. Ronaldo had achieved his greatest dream and once the emotions had calmed down, he went over to Nani, thanked him for everything and handed him the silver boot as a gesture of gratitude. It had all gone full circle. From there on out came short-lived moves to Valencia and Lazio and with one final hurrah, upon finding Sporting in total disarray with every star player leaving the club after fans had broken into the training ground and beaten them up, he joined the club rejecting millionaire deals at Qatar and China to try to keep his team afloat and somehow he managed to take them to another Portuguese cup title before leaving to play at Orlando City for three years, then another at Venezia and now Melbourne victory all the way in Australia. It seems the final day is near.